Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome everybody to the groundbreaking of the Rauner Family Veterans Studios. And before we get going, I would like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for being here today. My name is Rob Johnson, former TV news anchor, now president of Rob Johnson Communications, and a longtime friend and supporter of Nellie and Brian and a safe haven. I firmly believe in what they're doing, and they have helped so many people in this community get back on their feet, have a place to live, have, and most importantly, have hope. And that's what a safe haven does. And I would be remiss, I'm sure others will uh, give Nellie a congratulatory uh, uh, word, but they just won an innovation award, as you can see behind me. In case you didn't see the subtle banner behind me, they've just won a, uh, an innovation award, but but much uh, deserved, especially given that it was in a category for COVID preparedness, and that's that's certainly um, a pivot for a lot of organizations and companies having to do that. So, Nelly, congratulations, and uh, well deserved on that. We have a big program here. It is a short program, but we have a lot of people we need to acknowledge, and everybody wants to, uh, we want them to say a couple of words. And we're going to start with Nellie herself. She would like to welcome everybody here. So, Nellie, come on up. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rauner Family Veteran Studios Ground Bacon event. Uh, this has been a three-year um, project in the making, and in so many, at so many points, this project could have failed. But because of everyone that is here today, every single one of you have literally contributed to making this day a reality and making this project a reality. And you know, I cannot thank you all enough. Uh, there's so many people to thank today. There's so many people we want to give an opportunity to say a few words. I'm going to try to keep my words short, which you know is really hard for me to do. But I wanted to start off by, first of all, asking everyone here that served our country, all of you military veterans, please stand up and raise your hand so we can acknowledge you. You are the reason we are here today. You are the reason that we are free. You are the reason that we all fought, everyone on this team, to make this project a reality so hard to make happen. And I cannot thank you enough for what you did in signing up to literally pay the ultimate price and to thank those who did pay the ultimate price to make sure that every veteran that served our country came home to a place to live. 40% of the veterans coming home today don't have a place to live. And that's not going to happen on our watch. We're going to continue to do this now and going forward, just like we've done for the last 26 years. I want to thank my husband, Brian Rowland, for being the inspiration for A Safe Haven. I want to thank his father, Michael Rowland, who we just lost a few weeks ago, who served our country honorably as a Korean military war hero. And we hope that he could be here today, but we know he's here in spirit. And I want to thank my entire team. I'm really proud to say that A Safe Haven actually has been acknowledged by the Department of Labor as a vet hire organization, which means that we, a very big percentage of our employees actually are military veterans. So. Uh, we were the first in the city of Chicago to get this recognition, and we hope to continue to hire and employ as many veterans as we can uh, going forward as well. So thank you. Again, so many people to acknowledge. Please look at your programs and help me welcome everyone that helped make this project a reality, including Congressman Danny Davis, uh, including, uh, I cannot say enough, uh, gratitude and thank you to the uh, director, the regional administrator, Joe Galvan from HUD, who stuck with us. There were times we needed extensions for this project. He made that happen. Could not have happened without him. 
And again, to everyone that's here, including representatives from the Veterans Administration we've, we've partnered with in this building for the last 10 years. Thank you, Dr. Landreth and the entire team from the VRRC. And uh, again, uh, I will uh, never sit down if I keep going. So please help me uh, you know, thank Rob Johnson, which by the way, uh, we planned this together for months. <laughs> The truth is, I called him up at 8:30 last night. <laughs> but it's so it's so uh, appropriate because one of the uh, largest veteran events that we held over eight years ago, he was the MC for that event too. So thank you for rallying and rising to the occasion every time. Thank you, Rob. Again, I bring you Rob Johnson. Thanks, Nelly. I um, I just happen to be having a couple meetings in the area today and I'm like as you all know nobody says no to Nelly so I'm like yeah I can start my day a couple of hours early and come on out here and help out because I truly believe in what's going on and uh, this is such a great day a lot of hard work as you mentioned let's uh, bring on up right now congressman Danny Davis congressman Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And let me just on behalf of all my friends that I see who are elected, Jason Walter, <laughs> it looks like the whole group of elected officials from this community are here, and that's what Nelly does. But let me just congratulate the Roland family for the tremendous leadership that they have provided in terms of making sure that individuals in our country and in our society who are in need of service get what they deserve. So Nellie, Brian, I congratulate you. I also want to give a shout out to the Rana family for the tremendous civic service and leadership that they have provided down through the years providing resources. I see the name on buildings. I see the name on social service activity. And so it's a pleasure to know that we have these individuals in our community. Last thing, Commissioner Galvin has been such an outstanding person. We've enjoyed working with him on many occasions to try and help make sure that federal resources are matched with local and philanthropic resources to make things happen. Joe, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for what you do. Welcome to everybody to what we call the great west side of the city of Chicago. Thank you, Nellie, an outstanding job. Thank you, Congressman. It's so nice to see so many familiar faces here today, even though many of them most of them are covered with masks. So when you see eyes that you know, it's like, hey, there you are. Nice to see you. Fabia, good to see you back there with the eyes. Um, let me call up on now the HUD Regional Director, Joe Galvan. Joe. Good morning, everyone. It's a glorious day. A little bit of rain. But, but it's always a glorious day when we all get together and uh, are able to celebrate. I look at the list, it's like, um, you know, an old homeschool list, and seeing everybody there, certainly the congressman, congressman, you've been a pleasure, your staff have been a pleasure to work with. We always thank you for appropriating the money. Without him, you know, we don't get the money to be able to give to people like Nellie. And uh, please say hello to Bruce. Uh, it's, it was a pleasure uh, serving with him uh, when he was governor. And, and all of our other friends, I don't see Gil around, but um, real quick story about Alderman Burnett. When Secretary Carson first came to uh, Chicago, we were with uh, the alderman, and he had really kind words to say about me, because this is my second tour of duty. I served under President Bush 2001, 2009, got to work with uh, the congressman and the, the alderman, and he said some really strong, good words uh, to the secretary. And I still owe you lunch for that one. So, but. Uh, I, I just want to say what an honor it is to be with you here today. Nellie goes back and Brian go back a long way of public service. It's about working together. It's about bringing together the community. 
I tell people while I'm an appointee of President Trump, it's not about the left, right, middle. It's about Americans. It's about serving our veterans. It's about working together to give, as Nelly said, to those, give back to those who've given so much to our country, who've made that sacrifice for our nation. There's not enough we can do. My son-in-law, who's a captain in the Army, I've always say, we talk about his guys, and he says, Mr. Galvin, I take care of my soldiers when they're under my command. Please take care of my soldiers when they go back into public life. And that's what Safe Haven Foundation has done. That's what we are doing at HUD, and that's what all of you are doing. We're making sure that every veteran has a place to call home. It's the least we can do for those who have given so much to their nation, so much to those who have protected our rights to come together to live in this great nation. So I want to say thank you, Nelly. Congratulations. I'm glad we're not at the other site because it's a little bit messy. But congratulations. We look forward to opening it. I want to say bless all of you. God bless those who will live in those apartments. And may God continue to bless this great nation. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Um, I want to jump on what the Congressman had to say about the benevolence of the Rauner family, and you see and uh, experience it all over the place. And certainly, these veterans' apartments wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be happening right now were it not for the generosity generosity of the Rauner family. So, I'd like to welcome up to the stage now former Illinois First Lady Diana Rauner. Diana. Rob, it's, um, it's just a, a, a tremendous honor for me and Bruce and our family to be part of this extraordinarily important project for this community, for all of us, and for our nation. Bruce and I are proud to have been partners with Nellie and Brian for over 25 years, since the very beginning of A Safe Haven, and we feel so committed to their philosophy of treating all individuals with dignity and respect appreciating the opportunity to help every individual become his or her best self, and particularly and especially to have this opportunity to honor and support our veterans who are so important to our country and to everything that we hold dear as a nation, our, our, our uh, liberty and respect, and again, the, the opportunity to show appreciation and, to, and support the veteran community is of great, great importance to Bruce and myself. So on behalf of both of us, we thank you for this opportunity to participate with you. And we are so proud um, to be part of this great, great new, um, new center. And look forward to seeing it full and, and active, just as this building has always had so much life in it. Thank you. I'd like to call up now to the stage Anthony Simpkins, Managing Deputy Chicago uh, Director of the Chicago Department of Housing. Anthony. Good morning, everybody, on this beautiful Chicago day. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, and the Department of Housing is proud to be here. The mayor wanted to be here, uh, but couldn't. Uh, so, but she certainly sends her congratulations. Uh, you know, um, 2020 has really been a year of uh, challenges. We've all been asked to stay at home for safety. Our homes have become our offices. They've become our schools. They've become our restaurants and our playgrounds. And so I think it, this has highlighted the importance of home. But there are so many out here, including our veterans who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country, that don't have a place to call home. And that's why this project is so important. This provides an opportunity for those in need, especially our veterans, to have a place to call home. Um, and that's why we're so proud of the work that Safe Haven has done for many years and the ability to partner with them uh, to move this project and similar projects, and similar projects forward. Um, but this will not just provide 90 affordable housing units for, uh, for our veterans. It will also provide critical services, including education and counseling, help with public benefits, 
uh, with the resource center that's just a few blocks away. So this is really a holistic approach uh, to housing. You know, the, um, the Department of Housing and the city are really committed to increasing the number of permanent supportive housing units that we have, but the city can't do it alone. Um, we need partners like a safe haven uh, to move these kind of projects forward and make sure that um, our veterans and all Chicago residents in need have a place like us that they can call home. So we're very proud and we look forward to continue to work with Safe Haven uh, to move projects like this forward in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Let's uh, call up to the stage now Rodrigo Carrillo with the Illinois Department of Housing Authority. Good morning, everyone. So the weather cooperated on this amazing day. On behalf of Governor Pritzker, the Illinois Housing Development Authority, our Executive Director, Kristen Faust, and Ida's staff, I'd like to congratulate a Safe Haven Foundation and the Rauner Family Veterans Studios Development Team. Our partners at the, development, at the Department of Housing and Urban Development, Congressman Davis and his colleagues in Washington, and especially Mayor Lightfoot, Alderman Irvin, and Alderman Burnett and the Sh Chicago City Council. This is an exciting investment in, in the Douglas Park neighborhood, a vacant lot that will be transformed into high quality, affordable housing apartments designed to support veterans, as well as a broader community revitalization efforts underway in this area. Ida is dedicated to financing affordable housing that serves veterans, residents at risk of homelessness, and other vulnerable populations struggling with housing instability. We have funded over 2,300 units of supportive housing across the state of Illinois in the past five years. Ida awarded federal tax credits to help finance this development. It's a competitive process. And we look at the proposals we receive carefully to make sure these resources address local needs and support broader range of housing choices in the community. And to this end, we are proud to partner with a safe haven on this new rental community that will help veterans have sustainable housing and thrive in their new community. While these resources make these developments possible, we cannot do this work without our partners. And it's a coordinated effort from the city, state, federal agencies, private lenders, charitable organizations and local service providers to help veterans and their families address their issues to co contribute to housing instability. The community is especially important in this work and we're grateful to have Mayor Lightfoot, uh, Alderman Irvin and Alderman Burnett as advocates and leaders and champions for affordable housing in city council. And this advocacy goes a long way in making this development possible. We're also uh, fortunate to have leaders in Washington to recognize the, low, uh, the importance of programs like the Low Income Housing Tax Credit that make developments like this possible. Congressman Davis has been a champion of Ida's work to improve access to affordable housing and supportive services, and we appreciate your support as the work expands in housing opportunity and choice for the residents here in Illinois. This milestone shows what is possible with government that works together. State and city agencies working hand in hand with nonprofits and the private sector um, to make positive changes that will improve outcomes and the quality of life for veterans. With the planning and zoning and financing hurdles that need to be cleared, it takes a lot of time and effort and coordination from everyone involved for these deals to work. But the result is a quality home that help veterans remain healthy and housed for years to come. Ida is grateful for the chance to work with everyone here today. Thank you again for all the work that you do in uh, affordable housing in Illinois and congratulations to Safe Haven. Thank you, Rodrigo. Let's call up one of those advocates he was just mentioning right now. Alderman Jason Irvin. Alderman. Thank you, Rob. And um, 
thank you to uh, Nellie and uh, Brian for bringing the vision of the Safe Haven Rauner Studios here to the west side of Chicago. Uh, I don't know about you, but every time I look at the phone and I see Nellie's calling, I wonder how much is this going to cost me. <laughs> so, but generally, these are all good things for the residents that live on the west side of Chicago. So it is generally with, with great pleasure because he's always looking to figure out what can we do to help someone. And that's why we do what we do. It's always to help our communities, to help them thrive, to help them grow, to show people that there's better options out here in life. So I just want to thank you, Nellie, for your hard work, for your pushing at every level, from the federal to the state, all the way down to the local. And if you ever look at this project, you'll see there's money coming from everywhere to make this work, and also to our former uh, First Lady. This is the second building in our ward that has the Rauner family name on it. So again, we appreciate the philanthropic in the, on the west side of Chicago. And again, congratulations and thank you. Yeah, Alderman, I was looking at my phone last night, and when Nellie said, hey, Rob, got a minute, and I said, getting ready to hop on a virtual fundraiser for a buddy, can we talk tomorrow? Not really, kind of time sensitive. <laughs> so we talked, and, and here I am hours later. <laughs> Let's welcome up to the stage Alderman Walter Burnett. Alderman. Thank you very much. Uh, gives me a great honor and pleasure to be here to the elected officials that are here, to all of the uh, government people on every level, from the uh, federal level, the state level, and the city level, also to the first lady. Uh, you know, uh, been knowing uh, this family for a long time. Matter of fact, they're bringing up their son who's doing the same thing, uh, developing affordable housing uh, in other areas of the city and, and, and throughout the state of Illinois. You know, they, uh, their story touches me because they come from, Nellie and, and, and Brian both were in the financial industry where uh, they were investment bankers and they were making money and, and a lot of great things and, and uh, you know they can be somewhere in Florida right now at one of their places somewhere just having a good time but they decided to dedicate their lives to people in need of course like every family they've, they've had their struggles and they took their pain and they turned it to a passion to help other people so I just want to commend you all and thank you all and say God bless you guys for what you're doing for people in our society and playing it forward and looking back and helping people. Uh, you know, when I stand in this cold, uh, and, I, and I'm trying not to say too much because I'm a little emotional right now because I have a, uh, a uncle in the hospital who's a Vietnam veteran who we've been helping and been dealing with a lot of illnesses from fighting in that war. Uh, I think about, you know, a lot of the guys who are out on the street right now who's cold. A lot of the veterans that are out here who are cold, a lot of the veterans who are out here right now who may have uh, substance abuse and need a lot of social help because of uh, some of the things that happened to them when they were fighting for our freedom and our way of life, uh, and, and, it, and it adversely affected them mentally, right? And uh, I just want to say God bless you all. Thank you for giving them a place to stay. Uh, I commend all other people who have uh, contributed to this process. Of course, you need some financial people to put a deal like this together because it takes a, a lot of people to make these things happen. Uh, and hopefully, this is not the end of this, that we can continue to do this. But I would be remiss if I did not uh, commend my colleague, Alderman Irving. Uh, Alderman Irving uh, does a great job in his ward. Uh, he makes sure that people in the ward work on the projects. I commend them for hiring an African-American contractor, GNA, GMA, uh, to do the development, Cornelius Griggs, who's doing a great job. And if you go, once we go down here to this project, you'll see so many African-American men working on this project, and that's commendable, and that's inspiring to all of the other people who live in this neighborhood. So God bless you all. Congratulations. Thank you all very much. Congratulations.
Thank you, Alderman. I appreciate that. And uh, let's call up Illinois State Representative LaShawn Ford, who's also on the Illinois Housing Commissioner uh, Commission co-chair. So, uh, State Rep, come on up here, please. Thank you, Rob, for always being here for um, A Safe Haven. I want to start out by making sure that I give Brian a personal round of applause, and we can too, because he is the inspiration for everything that happened. I know Nellie always gets all of the um, praise, and quite naturally she should because um, she is the greatest. But Brian, we love you too, so thank you, Brian. And. Also, I want to make sure that I say hello to my good friend, um, Linda Chapladia, the Director of the Illinois Department of Veteran Affairs. Governor J.B. Prisker did a fine job um, appointing you to that spot. You are a veteran. You get it. And I know that you are a friend um, to the veterans community. So thank you for being there and serving our country. And um, First Lady Diane Rana, thank you so very much for all that you and your family do and continue to do, um, you guys show how government and the private sector could work together for good. This is a great example of how your contribution will help the West Side and veterans in Illinois and be a model for the world to see how when the private sector and government works together, good things happen. So thank you so very much. And. Nellie, I just have to say for everyone here, when I get the call from Nellie, I know that something is about to happen and it's going to get done. It's going to get done. She never, ever stops until the task is complete. So thank you so very much, Nellie, for having a vision, but also the fortitude to continue to make sure that your vision is fulfilled. And many people will benefit from your vision and your hard work. As a state representative, as in the state of Illinois, the politician, there are lobbyists for the big businesses. But poor people seem to struggle to have the big money to have someone to lobby for them, to advocate for them. And Congressman Davis knows that we have to be the advocates, but we also have to have people like you that bring the ideas to us to fight with you. And so I'm confident that the veterans in Illinois and the homeless population in Illinois have a strong lobbyist, unpaid lobbyist, that's going to continue to fight for them and make sure that they're never forgotten. And so thank you very much for the work that you do, and we look forward to being your partner as time goes on. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, Representative Ford. Let's call up now the Executive Director of the Chicago Housing Authority, Tracy Scott. Uh, Tonelli and, and Brian, uh, thank you for having us here. Uh, to our elected officials and distinguished guests here. My name is Tracy Scott, and I'm the CEO of the Chicago Housing Authority. I'm new to town, so there are lots of new faces all behind masks. I hope to meet you soon without the masks. Um, I'm reminded uh, in this ceremony, as a student of history, I was reminded that veterans play an important role in the history of affordable housing in the United States. Much of the public housing that was built in the 1930s and 1940s was built to house veterans who were returning from World War II. So here we are today to break ground, or to continue building, this new building that's dedicated to veterans, which is only right so that veterans have a place to call home. CHA is proud to join the partners in this project by providing long-term rental assistance for 75 of the 90 units by utilizing what's called the Veterans Affairs Supportive Housing Program, also known as VASH. And I'd like to just take this moment to thank Congressman Davis and the other elected officials. This is one of the, only, one of the few programs that HUD has continued to expand even in hard times. BASH links affordable housing and supportive services to enable veterans to live their lives in dignity 
and to thrive in a safe place that they can call home. Using these VASH vouchers, CHA has assisted more than 1,100 veterans and their families in Chicago in 49 of Chicago's 50 wards. That's worth clapping for. 1,100 veterans have a place to call home. And when the Rauner Family Veteran Studios by a safe haven opens, CHA will assist another 75 veterans. And we're proud to be part of this very important investment. This project is the third development this month in which CHA has celebrated fulfillment of our mission of affordable, decent, safe, and stable housing. A few weeks ago, we helped open a senior property in Calumet Heights and a mixed income community in Bronzeville. And today, we're, here, we're proud to be here for this development for veterans in this community. I'd like to thank HUD for the VASH funding and a safe haven for the tremendous work that you do and for your partnership on this and many other projects. And I'll end re my remarks with this thought. President John F. Kennedy said, as we express our gratitude, we must forget, must never forget, that the highest appreciation is not to just utter words, but to live by them. In building affordable housing, for some of our nation's most honorable citizens, we are indeed living our gratitude for their service. We hope to see you back here for the ribbon cutting, uh, for the ribbon cutting when this building opens, and I thank you for having us. Thank you, Tracy. Let's call up now the Regional Mental Health Director of U.S. Veterans Affairs, Ed Landreth. Ed. Thank you, and good morning. Uh, I, I truly feel privileged to, uh, to be asked to be here today for the groundbreaking of the Rauner Family Veterans Studios. Today we're celebrating 90 living units, 75 of which are project-based for our veterans. This project is the result of the Rauner Family commitment to ending homelessness. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's also the project of Nellie and Brian's strong leadership in our community, as well as across the nation, and the commitment and relationship between so many people and organizations. It's so gratifying for me to be able to see the United States Department of Veterans Affairs working in collaboration with all of you. Our homeless and mental health staff at the Chicago VA, Heinz VA, work closely and tirelessly with A Safe Haven and, and a lot of people who are here today to reach the goal of zero veteran homelessness. We're committed to this mission. So thank you. Thank you for allowing us to work with you. Um, the, the, uh, I, but you know what, I just, I just want to go off script for a second and also mention to you that this project is so important when it comes to, to our veterans and, and saving veteran lives. Uh, we all know that, that on average, 17 veterans on average per day complete death by suicide. And so uh, we, we also know that veterans are at higher risk for suicide than the general population. And one other thing that's, that's really vital to, to understand is that veteran homelessness plays a significant role in this. The, so the, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs is dedicated to reaching uh, zero veteran homelessness and zero veteran suicide, but we can't do this alone. We need to work closely with our partners. Uh, we need to work closely with a safe haven to build coalitions, relationships, and, uh, and before the, the, the idea was uh, fashionable, uh, to take a public health approach to reaching veteran, uh, zero veteran homelessness and, and suicide. So again, thank you. I also want to take this opportunity, opportunity again to thank the Rauner family, the city of Chicago, HUD, CHA, our congressional representatives and partners, uh, for making this groundbreaking possible. Thank you for taking our mission seriously. And, and of course, you would. It, it's the right thing to do for those who have volunteered to keep our democracy safe. Um, so again, I just I, I want to emphasize that that you are not only accomplishing the mission, but once again, far exceeding expectations. We have great hope for this project, 
and we'll do everything in our power at, VH, at, uh, at VA to be able to be a, a, a strong ally to all of you. Why? Because it's our service, our service to those who have served, our commitment to ending veteran homelessness and suicide, and our pledge to care for those who shall have borne the battle. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Let's next hear from Linda Chapa Lavia, who's the director of Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs. Linda. Thank you. You know, before I begin my remarks, I miss my colleagues a lot at federal and state. Uh, and I think Alderman B uh, Bennett said it the best. If you're cold right now, just think about our homeless folks that are on the streets and think about our veterans that are on the street. That's, that's pretty profound. Good morning. My name is Linda Chapel Lavia, and I'm the director of the Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs. And I am a proud Army veteran. I see you're a Marine. You, you good too. <laughs> um, and the Goodwill Ambassador for nearly 650,000 veterans in the state of Illinois under this governor, Governor J.B. Pritzker. Serving our veterans who suffer from the invisible wounds of war is my greatest honor and privilege. These warriors wrote a blank check to the United States Armed Forces to fight for our freedoms, and we often take that for granted. And so many have returned to fight more battles in the form of PTSD, addictions, major depression, and most tragically, suicide. Most of us cannot possibly imagine enduring these internal struggles day after day. Thanks to veteran sacrifices, most never will have to. That anyone who bravely wore this nation's uniform would not have a, a place to call home is horrifying. It is our responsibility as a nation to stand up for these brave men and women who were willing to put everything on the line for us. But too often, the invisibility of homelessness takes over and good people turn blind eyes to the problem. But not for Nelly Velasquez Roland or Brian Roland. Since 1994, Nelly and Brian have chosen to honor the dignity and value of people, no matter their circumstances in life. They understand and address the unique challenges veterans face and treat them with admiration and respect in which they have earned. Illinois veterans are so much better off because the two of you and your family and your children. And for that, I am so grateful. The Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs is committed to fight this, but we cannot do it alone. We must partner with organizations like A Safe Haven that have deep roots in the communities and expertise in facilitating lasting changes. By providing the best chance for a happy and fulfilling future, A Safe Haven has demonstrated this, uh, the real possibilities of ending veteran homelessness once and for all. Congratulations on making this project a reality and thank you so much for everything you do for Illinois veterans. The IDVA is looking forward to joint efforts in the future and I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the Rauner family and everything you have done in this neighborhood, in this ward, not only for veterans, but for all people. So thank you from my deepest sincerity. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Let's call up now Elliot Richardson, president of the SBAC. Elliot. Thank you so much. So um, I'm honored to be uh, able to address you on this wonderful occasion. I think we all know Brian and Nellie are fantastic. Thank you for what you did. Um, First Lady Ronner, it's so nice to see you again. Thank you for all you do for the community. Um, so Nellie has always recognized, I run a small business advocacy organization, and when I get calls from her, a lot of times it's to talk about how important small business is. And I say, I know Nellie, um, that's why we're working together on this. Um, these are difficult, difficult times. People are losing their jobs, veterans are losing their jobs, small businesses are struggling, and unfortunately the result of that 
will be more jobs will be lost and people living paycheck to paycheck may face the prospect of homelessness and that is why Nellie recognizes and I think we all recognize how important it is to build coalitions we are all in this we are all in this together and for that reason I am so excited to announce that a safe haven in the SBAC and the small business community will be working together, we will be partnering, and we will be finding ways to strategically fund both opportunities to end homelessness and to support the small businesses that will be able to hire folks, put people back to work, including our homeless veterans. So um, I'm so thankful that a safe haven um, is willing to form this coalition I look forward to working with everybody uh, to bring people together because that is the way to get out of this pandemic and to rebuild lives, to rebuild the lives of our homeless veterans and to help rebuild businesses. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And last but certainly not least, I'm glad you got a little, uh, got some props from everybody up here because everybody knows what a Dynamo Nelly is and we know who is alongside of her every step of the way. It's a Safe Haven co-founder and military veteran, Brian Rowland. Brian. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, everybody. Uh, what you don't know is by the time I wake up, I have 15 emails from Nellie. <laughs> you know, we got married 30 years ago on a day like this, and it was the best decision of my life. And. Uh, I'm grateful to Nellie and my family and the board of directors because, you know, truth be told, the safe haven is a lot based on my experience, but a lot of my success, you know, I've been so, sober over 30 years, a lot of my success is, you know, helping others, you know, the gift is by giving it away. The more people I help, the more it helps me. And every single person through our doors helps me and helps my family. And we've helped over 10, 12,000 vets come through here. And being a vet's always been important to us. And about 12 years ago, when Lincoln first came out, LinkedIn, I put on there my goal was to create veteran housing. And uh, you know, we're very proud that this has come on. I was really hoping my dad would be here. You know, my dad uh, came from Ireland, fought in the Korean War, become a citizen, uh, received a Bronze Star. And in the last few years, he had dementia. And he wouldn't really know. Where we are, and I'd show him a picture. I go, you got to stick around. We're building this facility, and I need you there for a grand opening, because he was there along with Congressman Davis and so many other people, to at the groundbreaking of the Melrose Park project, and and that kind of gave him spark, and uh, he, he's in a better place. He's, a friend of mine told me that he's in heaven in an Irish bar with my mom toasting us, and that's how I choose to remember him. But I'm really grateful to everyone for being here. This project is, you know, you know, I heard a long time ago that, you know, we're the land of the free because of the brave. <clears throat> and the brave are the ones, this, what this is all about. You know, permanent housing, no one who served our country and risked their lives should be homeless. And I've met remarkable people, number of Purple Hike guys. <laughs> through these doors, a number of guys, the Purple Hearts, Silver Stars, Bronze Stars have come through. And uh, nothing makes me more proud than we're going to be able to create this. And with the, the Rauner family's help, and we're also doing 75 units in Hobart, Indiana at the same time. And uh, I am really grateful to the Rauner family because 25 years ago, when this was a dream and we had really had nothing, they believed in us. And we've helped about 130,000 people. And uh, if nothing else, you know, it's helped me. More than, more than those people. And I think if everyone just had that, that attitude of helping others, I think we'd go a long way. But I really want to also thank the Board of Directors, Urban Works. Mike, thanks for coming out. Um, this project here, really, uh, my son, Devin Rowland, is the project manager. He made the mistake of uh, graduating Purdue and coming here one day afterwards to help my, my wife and hasn't escaped. He got his master's in real estate development, and now this project is, is his project, and uh, he's doing a wonderful job. Thank you, everybody, for coming.
We only have 14 more speakers. No, that's, that's it. We're done. Uh, but we're, actually, if you were up here speaking, if you want to take part, we're going to do a photo op at 2900 West uh, Roosevelt, where the Rounder Family Studios are going up as we speak. It will be slated for completion sometime in 2021. Uh, but if you all would like to move that way now, um, we're going to take a few pictures, get a photo op for what is an indeed a, a wonderful project. And thanks again to the Rauner family. Thanks again to A Safe Haven and all of you who are supporting a wonderful cause and a wonderful mission. Again, my name's Rob Johnson. It's been an honor to be with you all here today. God bless you all and stay healthy. Take care. But you are it now and it's never Because it allows people immediate access at the time when they need it. Okay, you get the right people in place. That increases. Yeah, now I'm working on my blue room. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. One of the children is like that. Uh, they ain't looking bad over here. Yeah. Yeah, grab it. No, I think you can go to that You just thought we should meet them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I was going to say, can you go up high? Well, I'm not going to be here until they're ready to go. Okay. <laughs> I might want to turn that down so that you can see if you're actually getting the... I can see it. Well, if people are standing in front of you, well, are you going to be able to go above them and look down? Yes. We'll do that. Okay. So,